Grade 11, welcome to this class. Um, let's talk about functions, and I'm going to focus on parabolas, as you already know. We're only going to focus on parabolas for, um, for this up and coming uh, week. And in your assignment, we will own, we, no, functions will only be tested with parabolas uh, and the work that you've done. Okay, so all the work, obviously, according to the term plan. Now, let's start just with a quick explanation. A lot of this is great thin work. So the very basic parabola. Okay, so this is function f. And let's say function f is equal to a x. So we're first going to look at the effect of constant a. So if a is a big number, okay. In other words, uh, bigger. Let's just say bigger than one. Okay. So let's say a is like a two or a three or a four or anything like that. Whatever your x value is will be multiplied by that number. In other words, the graph will be much more steeper, like this, for a value that's bigger than one okay if it's just one let's just say this um, this graph f the one of the black line is where a is equal to one then if a is bigger than one it will become steeper okay now if a becomes a fraction let's just say a is smaller than one but bigger than zero the graph will become wider like this so that's the effect of a and we're only sticking with positive values now we'll talk about the negative values now so this is the very first thing you need to notice the effect of constant a secondly i would like to focus on the rotation okay or reflection around the y-axis reflection around the x-axis so here we have another function let's just call this function g and now um, we are going to reflect it around the x-axis. So whatever is positive will become negative. And whatever is negative will become positive. So that means it will look something like that. And let's just say that this is, um, let's just make this h, okay? Then it's very important to understand that h, x is equal to negative whatever gx was. So whatever gx was times negative 1. That means the whole equation, everything times 1, it will become hx in this case. So this is the very first thing. This is a reflection around the x-axis we can call this rotation as well okay but just stick with reflection is rather more clear okay so this is around the x-axis so what happens your whole function becomes a negative secondly well thirdly actually we are going to look at reflection around the y-axis so the y values stay the same but let's just call this f but your x values Whatever was positive became a negative. And this is very important to remember that f x will then be whatever gx was, but where it has an x value, it will be a negative x value. So I'm going to do a practical example of this, just write down the equation. So let's assume gx was. Um, x squared minus 2x plus 7, okay, then with fx being equal to g of negative x, it will be equal to negative x squared minus 2 times negative x plus 7. You can see the y-intercept does not change, it stays a 7, which is perfect. The concavity meaning it's a smiley face, it remains a smiley face. You can see that... Um, it will remain a smiley face because your A will be a positive. So this is how the graph will look like. 
So this is now fx, that's the red graph as an example. Uh, if you want to look at, um, let's say, gx, let's just take the other example as well. So whatever gx was will just be a negative if we're talking about hx, right? So this was x squared minus 2x plus 7. So it will become minus x squared plus 2x minus 7. And you can see it makes perfect sense because now the y-intercept is no longer positive, it's a negative. And the concavity is no longer a smiley face, it's now a frowny, frowny face, right? You know, you know what I'm talking about because of the negative. So the, that's the, the reflection around the axis. So just to recap quickly, reflection around the x-axis, the whole graph becomes a negative. Okay? And you can clearly see it. Reflection around the y-axis, the x becomes negative. That's the only thing that changes. So you have to substitute and work it out. Okay, the next thing we are going to look at is translation. Okay, and it has nothing to do with language. It's translation of the position. Okay, so I'm just going to say dr, and it will first be vertically. Okay. So, again, this is something, this is not new at all um, to your understanding. You've done this previously as well. But let's just, again, just look at how we would um, approach this. Okay. So, here we have a graph. And let's say, uh, let, I'm going to start with a very basic one again. So, f is equal to x squared. Now, we know that this graph moves down with three units, okay? That then means whatever the graph is, like fx, right? You just subtract three units from the graph. So, this new graph, let's just do this, that's a new graph. Let's make a g. gx will then be whatever fx is minus 3. So in this case, it would be x squared minus 3. The same if it moves upwards, it will just become a positive. Okay, like the red graph, which I'm going to draw now. And let's just make that a 7. It's not according to scale. And we call this h. Then graph h x will be whatever fx is plus 7 units. Okay, so everything moves up 7 units. In other words, it would be x squared plus 7. Now, remember the turning point moves as well. And that's your hinge, sort of, with parabola. So I will, I will demonstrate that with the next example. Uh, so let's say, for instance, we have a graph that looks like this. And you know the turning point is 2, 3. And I tell you that this graph is translated by moving 4 units down. The turning point is what you are going to move 4 units down. So from 2, oh sorry, from 3 to negative 1. Can you see that? So this would be negative 1 excuse me, it would be 2, negative 1. So now, the new graph will just sit right there. So can you see? Your turning point is what is your point of reference with the parabola. You move that around, the whole thing moves around. Okay. Um, so this is with vertical translation. Now we're looking at horizontal translation. Okay. So, again we start off with our basic graph. We just so easy point of reference. Okay. Now, whenever we translate to the left or to the right, we are not adding or subtracting from the whole graph. We're adding and subtracting from the x value. Okay. So let's say the new graph is right over here on the left hand side. And we call this G. And it moved let's say 4 units, so this becomes a negative 4. Then G 
fx will be whatever fx is, but its x value will be x plus 4, not negative 4. If it moves in the, in the negative direction, we have to add a 4. If it moves in the positive direction, we have to subtract a 4. Okay? So this then means it will become x plus 4 squared, because fx was x squared. So gx will then be x plus 4 squared. And if you work this out to get the x-intercept um, by making it 0, you will see that it works out to be perfect in uh, being equal to negative 4. Okay, so whatever with our result translation, I'm just repeating this. You add or subtract from the x, not the whole function. Okay, so we will do another example. Let's say red one. And this is 3. And we call this h. Then hx will be whatever fx was, but it's x value minus 3. So this thing will be x minus 3 squared. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, now we're going to look at a combination of a vertical and horizontal translation. So, again, just starting at the origin, just as a point of reference. And now, I'm telling you that it's going to move two units up, and let's say three units to the right. Okay. So, again, what, what we are moving is we're moving the turning point, and the rest moves by itself. Okay. So, as a reference, this is function f, and fx equals x squared. So, now we move two units up, one, let's say, one, two, and one, two, three. So, that's our new turning point, and this is function g. <coughs> so, let's just take it step by step. <coughs> Excuse me. So gx is equal to, okay, let's first look at the horizontal translation. So whatever for x, it would be the f of x minus 3, right? That was the horizontal translation. Now the vertical translation is we add 2 to the whole graph. Okay, so it will be plus 2. So this will then be x minus 3 squared plus 2. And this should be the final equation of our graph gx. But I want to point something out. The turning point is now 3, 2. And I want you to notice this. The x coordinate of the turning point is whatever the negative of this is, right? So there you go. It's a 3, negative of the 3, it's a 3. And there is the y coordinate of the turning point. So whenever, and in your textbook they refer to a p and a q value, so you will have x, um, let's just say f x equals. They will put the Q there, which is the vertical translation. And there's a plus P, which is the horizontal translation. But I want to interpret this for you in a better way. It's X minus negative P squared plus Q. So if you put it in this format, that then gives you the actual um, P value. Okay, or sorry, yeah, like this, so negative times a negative, so that just gives you the actual um, turning point of the graph.